Welcome to the General's Gentlemen. Every week I show up to my Brazilian Jiu Jitsu class, even though I'm a beginner and get crushed by everyone else at the club. Despite tapping out again and again, I don't go home feeling defeated and discouraged. And why is that? It's something that I've thought about in detail. I'm a video game designer and critic, so the psychology of play is my jam and something that I talk about here on the channel. What I've come to realize is that, as a beginner, I'm hooked because jujitsu has the same fundamental engagement pillars that results in successful game design. Brazilian jujitsu is a martial art all about grappling and submissions on the ground. When fighters are rolling, they're trying to outmaneuver their opponent and secure a superior position. Eventually, one fighter will secure a choke or a limb lock, forcing the other to tap out signaling their conceit before getting injured. At the end of my jiu-jitsu classes, after learning a new technique, we do a number of five-minute rolls with different partners. Depending on how much of a skill disparity there is, I could be tapping out every 30 seconds or none at all. But rolling jiu-jitsu isn't just a win-or-lose situation. It can be broken down into countless moves and counters. Every time I escape from a weak position or pass my opponent's guard, there's a clear success state which feels awesome. So even though my eventual tap out is a definitive failure state, it's the end point of a dynamic struggle. A core pillar of engagement is direct gratification and intuitive feedback. Beginners can only experience gratifying moments if the consequences of an action is obvious. The gratification doesn't come from scoring points in some abstract rule set. It comes from outmaneuvering your opponent and knowing that you're now in a better position. Feedback is how players perceive they're doing and understanding when things go well or poorly. For a game to have intuitive feedback, players need to know the steps to victory and know how they're positioned in relation to those steps. Winning a round of jiu-jitsu is quite simple conceptually. Pass your opponent's guard, get to a superior position and execute a submission. The finer details are, of course, a lot more complicated, but those three objectives provide a reference point for how the players are doing and how they advance and regress through those states. It narrows the scope of complexity by compartmentalizing different interaction types. When I start a role of jujitsu, I'm not thinking about chokes and hooks, just how to pass or maintain the guard. Another great thing about free rolling jujitsu is the potential for a draw. There's no winner if neither fighter can submit their opponent before the timer runs out. I have no expectations that I'll be tapping out my experienced peers, but I don't have to. If I manage to survive the full five minutes without tapping, that's a huge personal victory. The potential for draws and stalemates provides extra tension and is a great solution for matchmaking players with a wide skill disparity. Stalemating is one of the many reasons why chess is such a masterpiece. The player with the upper hand has to stay on their toes, else they can throw away the win. Stalemating in jiu-jitsu also allows for a focused scope of beginner learning. They can emphasize improving their defense rather than attacks and submissions. Not getting discouraged after a loss is crucial, and jiu-jitsu mitigates this because of the instantaneous and clean slate nature of re-rolling. When I tap out, I don't sit and dwell on my loss and we don't have to reschedule or set anything up. We just get up and go again immediately. I can simply ignore a defeat and focus on doing better next time, and having tapped out four times in a row has no bearing on my fresh new attempt. Alternatively, the stop-start nature of rolling can provide a break. The defeated fighter can ask their opponent for advice or show them the move that they just lost to. Working on your mistakes and weaknesses is crucial to improving jiu-jitsu, as it's all about technique. Size and strength obviously matter, but if you can master the moves of jiu-jitsu, you can defeat fighters who are bigger, tougher, and stronger. This emphasis on technique makes jiu-jitsu more approachable, as every week you noticeably improve as you learn more moves and how to respond in specific situations. If improvement is only physical and not also mental, then growth is very gradual and not as noticeable. The cognitive emphasis over sheer brute force screens out the meatheads. 
Ego doesn't get you very far in jujitsu. Humility is required to learn and improve, and being humble is your only choice when you're being choked out by a woman or a teenager. I'm sure it's no coincidence that the people who I train with are friendly, respectful, and keen to help beginners. I've only trained at one jiu-jitsu club before, but I suspect the fact that my instructor is the lightest guy in the class helps build that culture of modesty and respect. Firstly, it shows by example that to be successful in jiu-jitsu, you don't have to be big. And secondly, if some brutish meathead comes in and wants to feel tough by beating up the instructor, is going to go home feeling humiliated. That guy either won't come back, or he will with a whole new perspective on his abilities and just how tough he is. The mats don't care about your pride. Game theory aside, jujitsu provides an experience that's hard to get anywhere else. It replicates a life and death struggle, but in a safe environment. You're up against someone trying to choke you out and break your limbs, and the only thing standing in between that is your mastery of the human body. Of course, your opponent isn't actually trying to do you any harm, and they won't unless you refuse to tap out, but the struggle feels and is real. I can't explain what something so primal is like, but there's a deep part of our psychology that wires us for that conflict and physical struggle. It provides a peak experience of adrenaline and other hormones that makes us feel alive, all while getting a great workout. And yet, unwinding after that rush, I experience something meditative and tranquil. I can always tap out or fall back on the mats, but one day, that might not be the case. Training jujitsu helps put things in perspective and makes me more grateful for life in general. It's so easy in our sheltered and privileged lives to forget about the capacity for human violence and suffering. Your first world problems are trivialized when an hour ago your only problem was survival. In summary, Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu gets beginners hooked because it excels in the engagement pillars that are universal across game design. Jiu-Jitsu has immense gratification due to an endless breakdown of attacks, counters, and maneuvers. The intuitive nature and simple concept provide feedback for how the fighters are doing. Jiu-Jitsu emphasizes technique rather than sheer strength, so it's accessible and makes improvement more tangible while deterring meatheads with ego. The potential for stalemates means less experienced fighters have a viable goal to aim for and can focus their training. Jiu-Jitsu's replication of a life and death struggle in a safe environment provides a peak experience and puts your life in perspective. Thank you for watching. My name is Callum McCall and I've been training Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu for about three months now in Perth, Australia. It's been an absolute blast and a big thanks to everyone at my club who's been awesome to train with.